Hey everybody, it is December 27th, 2016. I wanted to give everybody kind of an update on what I have planned for my backyard crossing setup. I've had a lot of people email me and send me messages uh, inquiring. Um, things haven't quite gone as planned as for what I actually wanted to do up until this point. Uh, I ended up in the hospital for about 14 days uh, with uh, some stomach issues, so that kind of set me back for uh, most of the year, but um doing a lot better now, but now I'm trying to get back um, back outside here to work on this stuff. However, it's December in northern Indiana, so snow and cold, so it's um, only doing what I can do, but it's probably going to be springtime until I get everything completed here, but kind of a quick update. Um, so what the original plan was, was to update the... Um, light system I had here with the preemption. Um, I wanted to recreate more of an authentic traffic light signal with a pedestrian and um, had that tie into the uh, railroad crossing gate. Um, I started working on the light system itself here, but unfortunately I didn't get it finished. Um, I had originally, um, the, what, the original light that was on here was a um, five section, 12 inch, uh, a kind of light traffic light with the uh, top three red, yellow, and green. The middle or the, the fourth from the bottom was the bimodal yellow and green arrow, and at the bottom was the preemption uh, railroad uh, signal. Uh, what I did was I independently pulled that sign, that uh, I'm sorry, that uh, signal down, and the uh, railroad indicators by itself, along with a uh, crosswalk pedestrian sign which actually has the countdown LED on it and then over here I was planning on putting in a uh, 8 inch traffic light with four spaces which would be the yellow I'm sorry red yellow and green and then a, a uh, flashing yellow amber arrow to indicate movement um, I built the setup put it up uh, I didn't quite like the way it was working so I pulled it down and I'm kind of going to kind of retweak that also the cabinet for this actually before I had this running into my control cabinet inside the garage well since then I've rerouted uh, some of my wiring and I actually have it now on a cabinet outside here problem is it's a uh, TS I believe type 1 cabinet um, which I kind of custom built however when I installed the thing I couldn't get it to work properly so I kind of gave up on um, redoing that. I was trying to retrofit it into a cabinet that was not really made for it. Um, I thought it would work and installed it and I couldn't get the thing to power up. So since it's uh, December, almost January, I brought everything in the house and I'm going to try working on that. So um, right now that's kind of the, the setup I have for this. I'm debating on removing the pedestal and just making it kind of a flush mount. Um, concrete base kind of like this cabinet here because the new cabinet I'm going to retrofit everything into which I'll show you here in a second is going to fit uh, well I, I don't I think it'll be too tall if I try to put it on the pedestal I don't want to knock off any more on the, the pole there and it's a nice base as it is so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that yet but I may redo that uh, which means I might have to take up the uh, concrete there for it but that will be in the springtime the actual crossing cabinet for now is actually the same as before nothing has changed uh, the only addition actually I'd like to show to the actual railroad crossing which does still work I still have the power hooked up to it is I was able to get the extension brackets on the uh, backlights so before they were um, the ones on the left were the same as the ones on the right uh, so it wasn't really authentic, but I was able to get a pair of the extension brackets that make it quite um, symmetrical with the gate. Um, I also did end up replacing the backlights, which originally um, I had the 8-inch safe train lights on it, uh, but I was able to get a hold of a pair of 12-inch safe train lights. So now everything matches 100%. Um, one thing I did want to point out real quick that I did change in addition to the uh, new lights in the back and yes the target on the uh, right or the back plate is slightly larger than the one on the left here on the back side. That's because I couldn't find the right replacement so I had to kind of make do with a, um, another brand of that for right now but I'm hoping to um, get that match up here this spring. But one thing I did was um, the the controller was for the uh, 
flashing lights was on a electronic controller and when I uh, actually got the new um, uh, back extension arms for the light I did actually swap out and actually get replace the electronic controller with an actual um, FN16A flasher so that is what is using and working to um, make the uh, crossing light blink now so it's actually um, more authentic now um, being that I have that uh, but then I usually as before I've got the the neutral the DN11 neutral relays up here that are you know assisting with the um, the uh, wiring components but actually having the actual um, relay for the flasher is kind of cool and here's another vantage point where you can see the flash pattern of the uh, the gate I have it in the up position right now but uh, that is the FN16 relay that is working on the actual crossing itself so uh, it's a little little bit slower than I think my um, electronic controller had them flashing back and forth but um, this is actually authentic so and then you can actually control the uh, pattern or the flash array by adding or dropping washers in the center of that which is kind of cool but this is um, what it looks like with the uh, flasher hooked up to it which is kind of cool um, originally I had the lights angled to the right here but when I angled these they shine right into my neighbor's window over there so I decided I better keep them um, facing forward I might slightly angle them or angle the lens down come the springtime um, the gate mechanism I have power is off to it right now so to keep the gate in the up position I have to tie a, a little barrier rope to keep the gate up because I realized last winter I left it down for most of the winter and that um, put some pressure with the snow when it piled on the gate on some of the motor mechanisms so I'm trying to avoid that this year so just um, when there's no power to the gate it's, it's a safe uh, safety um, protocol um, I guess you would call it the gate will lower and since I've got no power to keep it up I just have it tied off there um, another thing I'm going to do is in the springtime uh, hopefully in a few months here when the weather turns nicer I'm going to give it another coat of paint and I'm also going to the cross buck and the two track sign I actually have replacements for those I'm going to uh, put brand new ones up that I was able to obtain uh, those will look will not, look look really nice and then the extension brackets that hold those to the gate I'm going to um, sandblast those and repaint and get some new hardware to make those look more uh, more um, uh, fitting or kind of make it look more all together so I'm excited about that because that's the one part of the gate I actually haven't really touched from the beginning was those upper portion brackets um, a lot of those screws and bolts are rusted on so it's gonna take some work to get those off but once I get that done and get the hardware replaced it's actually gonna look really nice um, the other big change I'm gonna do other than installing the new traffic cabinet um, for the traffic light whenever I figure out this combination and by the way if you if there's something you'd like to see or something you think would be kind of cool send me a message below and because uh, right now this is still kind of in the works phase so I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do I want to incorporate the traffic light and a pedestrian signal all into the one but if you have an idea or something you think is really cool let me know and I'm more than happy to try to work it into the um, to the plan here but the one thing I'm gonna do is and I'm like this is the one thing I am excited for and I'll show you here in a second is my cabinet right now which houses my uh, components for the railroad I'm actually gonna be replacing this whole cabinet uh, right now this was a custom-built cabinet by one of my uh, friends that um, is uh, uh, big into electrical and uh, did a very good job putting this together um, but I always kind of wanted a more authentic um, look for the crossing so what I'm actually going to do and if I plan it right I bought a new cabinet that's going to sit and actually replace this existing cabinet uh, right here and let me uh, show you what um, that looks like all right so here I am I'm in my garage now this is the new cabinet that is going to be replacing the outside this is a actual railroad cabinet um, that I was able to obtain uh, through a uh, surplus so this cabinet is made by um, PTMW, that is the uh, company that makes it. It's a brand new, never installed anything, so it's going to be kind of a custom build, uh, which I'm excited for. So right now I've got the um, an, a, a, uh, an official NRS 
uh, 12 volt 20 amp battery charger that's going to be supplying the power to the crossing. Um, I've got one of these lights which is um, what you would see on the side of a bungalow to indicate um, power to the cabinet um, when there's, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but if there's AC power, which is mainly going to be running to the cabinet, the light will be steady on. But if it switches over to backup battery mode, uh, then I believe the other light will blink to indicate. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to hook it up to a battery yet or not. Um, depends. I have a battery to, to use. I'm just trying to figure out how to install that. Um, but the other big thing I'm excited for is this. I was able to obtain a Safetran SSCC 3 Plus grade crossing controller. So right now, the system I have now in place is um, everything's kind of manual. You flip a switch on and everything pops on. But this unit here will actually control the entire crossing um, specifically. And so I've got my output A, which is right there, which will control the uh, gate crossing, uh, the bell, and the lights. And then this is your power in, and then your, um, your LAN powers. Um, and your inputs into the crossing and I was able to finally get a user manual for it um, this is again surplus um, item that I was able to obtain and I'm excited to um, because this is now going to complete everything I want to with the, having the bell and having it timed properly and everything so I'm really excited to get this installed so it's going to be mounted inside of the cabinet here um, I also have this I actually have no use for this I don't know if I'm gonna put it or not it's a NRS uh, battery charger, track charger, but it's only 5 volts uh, DC, which again, everything here is 12 volts, so I'm not sure. I may put it in just so it lights up and looks pretty in the cabinet, I, I don't know yet. Um, but I've got that as well. Um, so I'm going to have that. Um, the way this cabinet is built, I'm going to drill two holes in the bottom, which are going to uh, use the existing uh, anchor bolts that are in the other cabinet out back, and I'm just going to swap out the cabinets and then run the wires in and just kind of a plug and play. So this is going to be my other winter project, is building this out and installing these um, devices in. And this uh, unit here is actually, I mean, it's pretty thin. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, you know, I'm just going to bolt it to the uh, back panel here along with the uh, charger up there. And then, as you can see, uh, right here, there's uh, kind of cool, you've got your, uh, your pieces that go in, but then there's a back area that you can run your wires through. And there's enough um, openings and bolts uh, that you can remove here uh, for holes for different um, items and such. So I can tuckily or nicely put everything on the, the front side here, run the wires through the back, and then um, have everything down the bottom, including my uh, outputs, uh, inputs, everything like that. And um, yeah, so it's I I'm excited for it. This is something that is going to be great. Uh, another thing I'm excited for is I my garage is quite kind of a mess here from winter. But I have a bell. And if you've seen some of my other videos, um, I have this... Uh, uh, bell that unfortunately never quite it doesn't work. It's so rusted out on the inside that um, I have no it's just kind of the, the look. Um, I was able to get a brand new safe tran bell which actually all the gate items I have out there minus the base are all safe tran so I was excited to get the bell. However the problem I'm running into is the pole I believe is a five inch diameter pole and the opening on the bottom of this uh, bell is four and a half inch, I believe. So, yeah, I can't just drop it in on the top of the pole like I was hoping. So, again, if anyone has any suggestions on what to do, I, I'm assuming they make adapters or extension brackets or kind of um, other things. But if you have an idea or a lead or a good suggestion of how to mount that to the actual um, uh, pole that's on my uh, the crossing system in the backyard. I'd very much appreciate it. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you guys that watch this video know a lot of stuff or work with railroads, so if you give me any advice, uh, that would be great. Uh, well, let me show you inside here, and I'll show you the actual um, uh, traffic light setup that I'm working on right now. So this is the cabinet that I had on the outside. It was um, it's a TS2 Type 1, I believe, cabinet. Um, it's got the load switches, MMU, um, 
the uh, BIU interfaces, and it was perfect because that's what I was using before, um, a different cabinet but similar setup. But I custom built this one, but however, I could not get it to work properly. I don't know if there's an electrical issue somewhere throughout the cabinet, and I couldn't figure it out. And the problem was with the weather changing, the colder weather, I couldn't really update it. So I am currently going to disassemble this entire cabinet, and I am going to replace it. Um, there's a website called govdeals.com, and I actually purchased two TS1 cabinets that came from the village of Van Wert, Ohio, um, that sat on two of their main streets for their install. So I actually have two cabinets. I've got this one here and this smaller one over here. These are both TS Type 1 cabinets. Now, this one is a little taller than um, this one right here. This one is only a two-phase uh, cabinet, and so it runs two directions and two pedestrian outputs. Um, this one also does have a preemption in it as well, but it's actually this cabinet is the perfect, um, well, I'm sorry, the same size as the one that I was um, building with um, on the back. But I found with the other one I was working with in the backyard, I really was kind of cramming a lot of things into a smaller cabinet. So this cabinet I'm actually going to leave alone, I'm not going to touch, I'm actually going to hook it up to one of my existing traffic light displays that I have um, actually right here, I know it's uh, kind of tacky right there in the middle of my living room, but uh, hey, it's a hobby, what can I say? But this cabinet here, which is a TS Type 1 also, um, but this one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to gut this cabinet out. Just take it down. I'm going to take all the electronic components out of the cabinet. And I'm going to retrofit the um, TS Type, uh, the Type 2, Type 1 cabinet, if that makes sense, um, into this cabinet. Because I'll have additional room on the top here for the controller, for the... Um, uh, the power supply for the, the 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 interface units and all the other preemption devices I want to put into it. So this is going to be my winter project: is slowly working on this cabinet to um, uh, get that this set up for the traffic light system. And I'm hoping once springtime hits, I will have this cabinet ready to go. Uh, I'll have it all tested out, make sure it works fine. Um, and then I'm going to have the new railroad cabinet that I have that I'm working on. Um, hopefully that will be good to go as well. And then in the springtime, I'm going to swap out the railroad cabinet that's outside now with the new one. And I'm going to drop in my new railroad cabinet, uh, I'm sorry, traffic light cabinet here, along with installing the new traffic lights that are going to go on the pole. And my new setup should be complete. So it gives me some stuff to do here in the winter. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, don't have a basement in my house, so... My living room is going to kind of turn into my workshop for right now, which uh, it's great until you get friends, you know, that come over and kind of look at you weird because you have a traffic light in your living room. But that's OK. It's a hobby and I love it. So but yeah, so um, that is just kind of an update. Um, again, if there's a certain setup that you would like to see or um, questions about any anything here, please send me a message um, below or I'll leave a comment. I'm more than happy to um, get back with you guys. Um, and appreciate all the views on the other video. I, I didn't had no idea that uh, I think the other video with the the one I did a few months ago has over two hundred thousand views now. So I was like, wow, that's that's really kind of cool. But um, yeah, I, I'm excited for this project. And once it's done, it's going to look really awesome. It's just kind of in that rebuilding stage. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So make sure you stay tuned, uh, like, subscribe, uh, share this video with your friends. And we'll see you here at the next update. And uh, hopefully by then I'll have uh, this cabinet done and I'll show you kind of where I'm at at that point. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.